So, um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Manetta. Uh, this is uh, my second LGM. Uh, I've been in London, but it's uh, the very first LGM talk. So, uh, bear with me with my uh, first LGM nerves and everything that is uh, part of that. Um, I'm a graphic designer. Uh, I work uh, since 2015 only with Floss, uh, free software in my practice, uh, which started for me um, with an exploration into code-based code workflows, um, but also the switch from the Adobe packages to explore many, many, many more tools, um, starting to use uh, Linux. Um, but what these changes mainly triggered to, to me was another type of attitude towards software and tools that I really, really enjoyed. Uh, so after these first three years, um, I'm asking myself what consequences it has to, to work as a designer and a web designer um, using Floss as in software, um, but while doing Floss as a certain attitude. Um, so in this presentation, I would like to focus mainly on the latter, um, and speak about something that is um, is not and maybe sh also should not really be defined so specifically, but it triggers a lot of um, imagination to me. Um, and I should go here, which is um, something that maybe could be called a flossed attitude. Um, so more specifically, in the context of this presentation, I would like to speak about uh, what a flossed attitude also can be. Uh, while making a static website, and it's actually nice how it connects back to the um, work uh, of Ricardo and uh, Anna and Ginger, um, because I also use Pelican um, in this project, and Markdown, and all those things. Um, so to unpack this question, um, I will talk about a specific website project that I'm currently involved in. Um, it's the process of making a website for a relatively new initiative in Rotterdam um, called Varia. And this is the website that, uh, it's still work in process, it's not uh, fully done, but um, ready enough to be uh, brought here, I think, I hope. Um, Varia is a collective, it's a collective initiative, well it's not a collective, it's a collective initiative uh, around free software and what we started to call everyday technology. We're still um, trying to find out what we are and how we can operate, uh, but the idea emerged from a wish to have a shared space in the city of Rotterdam, um, that's where I, uh, where I live, um, that can host different practices of a very diverse group of people. Um, the we, in this case, is a group of 15 artists, uh, designers, programmers and educators. Um, some of them really work a lot with free software and others uh, a bit less. Uh, so we're not really a collective, we're not really a hackerspace, but we're trying to figure out um, what we can be uh, while doing it. So this is our space um, that we have. And one of the formats to organize ourselves is that we're uh, trying out is um, the one of thematic work groups. So there's a work group around uh, a shared library, there is a work group around a resource printer that we have, uh, an administration work group, um, but also uh, one, uh, which is the one that I will speak from today, which is a group that is concerned with the website. And I say group here. Um, it only works if you can uh, see a group as uh, two people. <laughs> um, the website work group exists uh, at this moment out of myself and uh, Roel Roskam Abing, who happens to be the next speaker in uh, our event of today. Um, so, when considering how to make a website for Varia, uh, our mutual uh, understanding, but implicit understanding was to not just, just make a site, but rather to see uh, this moment as a potential for the process of site making to become a process of exploring what a website can be. Um, so we also, we're also trying to write and reflect on the choices that we make. And this is a first draft of that article that is still pending, but will be uh, published soon, hopefully. <laughs> uh, 
So while working on the website, we ask ourselves how we could do web publishing in a flaws, minimal, uh, self-hosted and uh, also distributed way. So one of the fundamental choices um, that we made early on was to use the static site generator as our publishing tool, which we used to produce uh, a traditional uh, set of HTML pages. So it, instead of being generated on demand, uh, the website lives as a set of HTML documents on a server. It is therefore a um, totally different kind of website um, uh, than a dynamic website, for example, which is executed um, by each request that it gets by uh, executing pieces of codes and making requests to a database. So we were interested in trying to see how um, the benefits of a uh, static website could uh, trigger other questions and other things that it will come back to. Um, so, ah, yeah. So this is these are the um, files that we're using to make the website. Uh, so we're using, as I said, the same tool. Uh, we're using Pelican. On the left, you see the um, files that the Pelican. Uh, comes with. So there is a folder for the content files. There's a, um, a make file that uh, has like lots and lots of recipes to be able to generate the website, to uh, also upload it to a server and other things, or run a local server to see and check your, your work while you're doing it, while you're working on it. Um, there are plugins. We're trying to also make our own plugins. Uh, and then there's the theme uh, folder for the CSS and templates. And it generates uh, the output folder that you see on the right, full of um, the static, traditional uh, HTML files and <coughs> other things. So I found it quite interesting how going back to uh, web development basics, uh, the making of these static HTML pages uh, is a way or can be a way to explore how a website and the process of making a website can become a way to understand the web today, to, to get a sense of the compound choices that have sedimented over time into web design practices and that are opaque when you use ready, uh, ready-made frameworks. So by creating uh, something from the ground up, um, it allows us to explore the potentials and maybe challenge the conventions of what websites should be. So um, while being in the process, uh, working with these static site generators, uh, we got also a lot of troubles and we were fighting with the uh, templates and, and translation uh, functions and things like that. Uh, but we also encountered uh, three sort of specific web design attitudes that I would like to highlight uh, briefly. Uh, minimal computing, uh, the use of independent self-hosted services, and uh, the exploration of distributed ways to reach publics. Um, so the Varia website can be seen as um, a form of minimal computing. Uh, minimal computing is a bit of a vast topic that I cannot really cover uh, in this presentation, but it has some interesting uh, implications in it. It's, uh, it's also a name of a working group, of which you see the website here, which is part of the Global Outlook Digital Humanities Organization that promotes collaborations among digital humanities researchers worldwide. Quite interesting. So they, um, they use the term minimal computing to refer, to refer to computing done under some set of significant constraints of hardware, software, education, network, capacity, power, or other factors. Um, and they are right, trying to write on what minimal computing can be and to reflect on that. And so um, I would like to highlight on um, three uh, uh, parts from one article that you see here, written by Gentry Sayers. And it also uh, reflect back on the work that we did uh, on the Varia website, I think. Uh, the first one being uh, minimal dependencies, an aim for minimal dependencies or minimal maintenance. 
as a way to speak about the reliance on scripts, databases, a lot of libraries, uh, versions and software in a minimal way to decrease resource demands and uh, processing time, but also to decrease the labor of updating, moderating, and stewarding a project over time. And second one being um, another uh, an interest uh, for the aim for a maximum. So instead of minimum, they also sort of turn it around and say the aim for a maximum ephemerality or what can maybe be translated as humanness. I found it, uh, I was looking for a good word to make that a bit uh, clearer. As a way um, to see the advantage of being able to work with plain text files instead of heavy CMS systems, uh, to stimulate uh, reuse of the content, to stimulate uh, experimentation that can be done with it, um, and collective participation. So the use of different tools that can parse markdown and uh, things like that. And a third one um, being an aim for a minimal vul vulnerabilities to decrease the risk of possibly security risks and attacks, such as cross-site scripting or SQL injections, um, which is something that is actually interesting that a static site uh, diminishes um, because it doesn't use server-side languages. So like, there are a lot of uh, security risks uh, tackled there. Which brings me to um, the next uh, attitude, so to say. It's one that um, uh, is a result of the, aesthetic, the choice for aesthetic sites. So because they use less resources, um, one can do with a not so powerful and energy efficient server to, uh, to host the files, um, such as this one. <laughs> Um, so it opens up for us uh, the possibility to serve our website from our own space, which we currently do. We need to shield it with a, like a <laughs> temp to, to keep it on temperature with a bit of uh, anti, uh, because the sun is directly on it, so maybe it's not the most strategic spot, but <laughs> it's fun to do. Um, it's, uh, it's also a crossover interest with another group within Varia uh, called the Homebrew Server Club. Um, so, but also in essence, the choice for self-hosting is uh, opposing uh, a sort of cloud mentality where the material circumstances of the hardware and the hosting locations are totally made irrelevant for a user, meaning that any servers can be deployed, scaled and migrated, etc. So I think our approach instead informs what can be hosted based on the material circumstances of both the website, but also um, what is possible to serve. So what is possible that we can do with this server and this place, etc. Um, however, in, however interesting uh, working with these sort of websites uh, might be and is for us, it's also a fact that it exists in a, in a context of uh, social media. So if we're looking uh, for publics to reach, to come to our events or work, work groups or workshops and things like that, uh, we're questioned with that, uh, with that issue of reaching out. Um, because one can argue that uh, users of the web has uh, quietly uh, atrophied to the point where one is required to publish through social media to reach an audience at all. Um, so as Varia, we agreed to not have a dedicated profile on social media platforms, which was driven by this strong desire to self-host our content, uh, but also to explore other forms of reaching out and other um, uh, ways of doing that. So the static, uh, where the static part of the website triggers questions of uh, sustainability or reuse or self-hosting, the generating part of working with the static website um, enables us to explore different ways of distribution and different uh, by transforming the, the plain text files into different media types. And the central tool is um, yet again Markdown, <laughs> um, which is a bit of a red thread through the, these three presentations, I think. Um, so we currently use Pelican to also generate RSS feeds 
So here you see on the left the markdown file, and on the right the HTML file that it uh, created. Um, we are working on a still not working, but almost there plugin <laughs> to generate a calendar uh, file that you then can import in your own calendar applications. Um, and there is this inbuilt feature of Pelican to uh, make RSS feeds. Um, and we're also thinking about making an uh, we'll go back uh, email newsletters or generate promotion material for our um, the things that are happening. And we're curious, super curious about other forms of connections that can be made uh, in between different static websites, um, such as web mentions. Something uh, that we dived into a bit, but we're not really there to present it to you. Um, or uh, connecting to other publishing platforms like Mastodon uh, and diving into protocols such as uh, ActivityPub. Hopefully each of these uh, forms that can be generated out of, uh, uh, yeah, in the, within this workflow has the potential for playful aesthetics, uh, to explore different reading experiences, and um, yeah, find out different ways to reach out to, to publics. Uh, one last uh, thing that uh, sort of other experiment that we did was to make uh, something that we started to call a stream bot. Um, it's a custom, it's a combination of a custom Pelican plugin combined with an XMPP bot and a few Git hooks to uh, connect them all together. So we wrote a uh, XMPP bot uh, that you see here on the right uh, being part of uh, a multi-user channel that we are using uh, on XMPP. And at the moment that, uh, for example, uh, if one, when the rule is sharing his flyers that he's bringing uh, to the LGM, the bot is activated, um, uh, yeah, it's activating in response to every image that comes in. Uh, it saves uh, the image uh, as a file on the server, uh, after which it gives it further to the Pelican plugin uh, to um, regenerate the whole website, because that's what you do when you don't have a dynamic website, but a static website. <laughs> it regenerates the website, uh, includes uh, the images uh, that it finds in that folder and makes like this um, specific page for the stream. So, um, yeah, the, so the, to conclude, <laughs> the choice to go back uh, to the basics of making a website um, was a deliberate choice to create space for ourselves to reconsider uh, what a website can be. Um, I find it super interesting to see how working with a static site generator and these three specific uh, web uh, attitudes can trigger questions that do not live on the surface of a website but go a bit further than that. Um, because as a designer, I'm usually concerned with uh, user perspective by designing and making interfaces. But in this project, the act of making a website becomes more deeply intertwined with the practice of web development on a more infrastructural level that I find, um, yeah, that was quite new to me and, and super nice, uh, yeah, super nice to do. So, for me, this is part of an attitude that we're also exploring within Varia. Uh, we're learning, regaining control over our tools and means, uh, combined with the playful uh, experiments, are for us a way to engage with software as a cultural product. So I like to think of this, that it could be also called a floss attitude. Something that I understand um, that I have a lot of troubles with to put into words, but something that I understand as an engaged attitude towards software and infrastructures uh, as a way to learn and keep on reflecting on them uh, together. Thanks. Are there any questions? Yeah? Thank you.
I mean, it's, it's the sector I was working in until last year, for about 10 years, and mm -hmm. more recently very interested in static site generation, stack, mm -hmm. things like that. But what I was interested in is I wondered what you, I found whether you did the terminology between static and dynamic, is actually quite problematic, and it's very, what's on the server focus, not on the user experience, mm -hmm. so we need to relook at how we talk about what these technologies are from a user face mm -hmm. In what sense do you mean? Is, the, that, is there a need? about having someone, this is a static site, so this yeah. is dynamic, actually the experience is quite dynamic, yeah. you can look back, yeah, is there another yeah, way yeah. we can talk about it? Yeah, that's a good point, because at this moment we're only thinking about uh, making site, indeed. And the question is, is the, if, the user, if it's important for the user to be f experiencing that this site is different, right? Or that... Well, most user experiences on a static, statically generated site are still dynamic. And so when mm. you're trying to talk to someone who is not a developer about, mm. well, we can build you a static site, or we, it becomes a barrier. Yeah. The terminology for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an, yeah. I don't know what to say to that, but I think it's an interesting point, indeed. Because the st a static has a connotation of being very traditional and old. Yeah. Correct, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I am Quinn W3C. Um, I think one way to look at what developers call a static site is that it's a pre-generated site. It's a dynamic mm -hmm. site, but it was pre-generated. Mm -hmm. And you, you, there's lots of reasons to do this, many of which you've talked about, of course. Um, but then you can take the focus away from the difference, from implying there's a different right. user experience, for example. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe that, and maybe that helps a bit. Because yeah. All those st static... Um, Sites are becoming fashionable again. It's trendy, so maybe it's okay for a while. Trends <laughs> 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 magazines and stuff like that. 